What's up, convoy? Back again with the most knowledgeable truck driver on YouTube. Oh man, I know, that's pissing a few people off every time I say that, and I love it. But right now, I just got loaded out of Detroit with that uh, load to Columbus I was talking about in the last vlog. I was sitting in Coke's dock for about six hours. I gotta give up two hours for free. That's uh, that time I don't get paid for, but after those two hours, I get paid 20 bucks an hour. So, an extra 80 bucks on top of my day, my salary and my mileage and everything. I was gonna turn this uh, day into a... Um, what usually uh, is a, for most companies who don't offer detention or that much pay in detention, uh, a shitty day to a pretty decent day. As far as pay goes, it was boring as hell sitting there in the dock doing nothing, twiddling my thumbs, but hey, uh, make the best out of a, a bad situation and I'm getting paid for it. Like I mentioned in one of my previous vlogs, um, this Coca-Cola in Detroit is uh, very unpredictable when it comes to live loads. Well, they only have, well, not only, 90% of the time it's live loads out of here. Once in a great while, they will preload one of our trailers with with the load, and it's kind of like winning the lottery when you walk in there and they hand you bills. Every time uh, that happens, I was, I'm always like, I'm going to the fucking casino tonight, because, uh, I don't always get this lucky. But whatever, that's, uh, that's fine. I don't mind, uh, waiting as long as I'm getting paid, because at the end of the day, I'm out here to make money. That's it. I ain't out here because I fucking love the lifestyle and none of that shit. I enjoy this job. Don't take that the wrong way. However, I wouldn't be out here if it wasn't for the money. So, speaking of money, I need to get it into gear and get down the road, down to Columbus, because I'm now digging into my 14-hour clock because of uh, how long it took to get loaded. So, let's uh, stick her in the gear and get the fuck down the road. All right, we get on the interstate here now, and um, got a question, got a question for some of you old schoolers out there. Now, this is not blanketing every single person who's old school, but it's more, more or less the old school mentality, I guess I'd call it. You know, it always seemed to me since I got into truck driving, and I bought into this bullshit for a long fucking time, at least the first few years of my career. Uh, bought into this fucking stupid fucking way of thinking, you know, and it's it's primarily the old school people, and it's kind of passed on. You start hearing some of the new generation of truckers saying this straight bullshit. It always seemed to me why, why, if you're one of these people who thinks like you're real super old school and shit, and like not even old, because there's a difference between being old school and then adapting and kind of staying with the times and you're still an old school trucker you maybe you know i don't know what what the fuck considers old school is even i don't know 20 years 30 years i don't know but it seems like a lot of these old school drivers out here uh they like doing shit the fucking hard way man i cannot understand what the fuck is going through their heads you know how many how many times i heard the same fucking story Literally the same story gets passed around from driver to driver to driver. I've heard it a thousand million times. The last vlog I got pissed off at Mike Balcom because the GPS was on and it was talking too much. I was getting mad. It made me think about this. But there's a lot of old school drivers out there that has the same fucking story about how they bought themselves a fancy new four or $500 trucker GPS. And then literally, the, as soon as they opened it, it t told them to go down a fucking dirt road, a truck-restricted route, and then they, they rolled down the window and chucked it out the window. I've heard that story so many fucking times. You know, now, all, that, before y'all jump on my shit here, I do think that you should, if you're driving a truck, you should be comfortable with reading your atlas, your map. Know how to read a fucking map. If you're a truck driver, that's very important. But the GPS is a tool that makes your life easier. Now, me personally, I really like using the GPS for the points of interest. Uh, because, I mean, most of the time, especially doing this, just going to the same spots, I pretty much know where I'm going to stop everything instantly. You know, as soon as I get a load, like, I know I'm going here to Columbus. I know where I'm going to stop. Or here to Houston, Pennsylvania, Cincinnati, wherever. Because I've been there doing this only exclusively this for last year. However, going cross country, some of those points of it, like mainly like the big truck stops, Pilot, TA, Flying J, whatever, the, the loves, 
I pretty much knew where most of those were across the country. If I was going down I-80 or, or anywhere, I-95, wherever the fuck I was in the country, I could pretty much tell you, okay, well, I know there's a pilot coming up, or there's a TA a few miles down the road, wherever. But those are not always convenient all the time, and the points of interest in one of these GPSs, uh, they'll at least, now a lot of them will tell you gas stations and shit, but uh, use it properly, you know, be smart about it, you know, and if you have, uh, if you're looking for a place to park, uh, hit a rest area, pull over somewhere, and then look up the address that the points of interest will tell you uh, on the, uh, on your smartphone, or you can even get one of those little, little booklets, uh, I know someone's going to say that, but it's just more convenient right here, right in front of you, you know, and but that's not it. The whole GPS thing is not, not the only issue with old school drivers. <clears throat> you know, a lot of these guys there, they, 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 seems like they would rather fucking cut their wrist rather than drive like a, a brand new Cascadia or something. You know, if it's not a steel truck, if it's not a long nose, whatever, it's not a real truck. Well, I got news for you motherfuckers. If, uh, if you don't think so, if you don't think that, uh, you know, the new aerodynamic trucks aren't real trucks, uh, I guarantee you, somewhere in the country, there's one of these aerodynamic, brand new plastic trucks pulling the same fucking trailer with the same freight on it that you're doing, that you're pulling around the country. So, you know, and not only that, there's all kinds of examples, all types of examples, just like e-logs, you know, these old guys are scared of e-logs. You know, for what? What the fuck reason are you terrified of e-logs for? You got no damn good reason to be scared of e-logs. You know, and uh, a lot of people are saying, oh, there's this big push for uh, the, the mandate so that all trucks have e-log in it. And a lot of these smaller companies are it'll put us out of business. It'll put us out of business. Because they say the Qualcomm, whatever system they're going to use, costs too damn much and it's gonna, that's going to sink them. Well, look at the technology. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. You can get fucking apps on your smartphone that are DOT legal. That'll keep track of your logs and shit for you. Just cleans things up. And now if you say that, oh, you're not going to be able to run enough miles on an e-log, then you're just flat out admitting that you're breaking the law to run your business, which makes you a shitty fucking person. All right, so I just stopped here in Monroe, Michigan at the Pilot. I had to clean off my mirrors. There's so much salt and just road shit on them from this little drive down I-75. Hopefully, um, that, that night's not like that. You have nights uh, once in a while where you just can't keep shit clean. Your mirrors, your windshield. You go through about 10 gallons of fucking washer fluid, it seems like. Hopefully it dries up once I get a little, get a little south of here. Because that shit is fucking annoying. Right now, I'm dealing with Reinhardt in front of me. He won't move. So... I'll give him a few more minutes, and I'm going to have to go alert him that I want to leave.
All right, so once again, it's the next day. I shut down here in Columbus, Ohio at the Coke because when I got here, I only had a few hours left. And on my way down here through Columbus, uh, it started the weather started off as rain, then turned to slush, and then turned to snow. And I got in here about a uh, quarter after 1 a.m., so I figured, fuck it, I don't have enough time to make it back to the house anyway. And being that the weather's going to be shady, and I was going to be deadheading back to the house up, up to Detroit. For the next load, I might as well just stay here and uh, let the weather pass and the, the, uh, the city workers take care of the roads and stuff, make sure they're not slick. And then start again this morning. The original plan was for me to run down here and then run deadhead to Twinsburg, find a load going into Michigan, and then pick up a load. However, we didn't anticipate Coca-Cola holding me for up for uh, six hours in the dock uh, uh, last night. So that didn't happen. So now I'm just going, I've got a 3.30 uh, p.m. pickup in Detroit out of the Coca-Cola going to Twinsburg. Now, being that it's Friday and I go home, it depends how much time I have once I'm loaded out of Detroit. I might run the Twinsburg load today. Maybe, if not, maybe I'll run it tomorrow. But normally when I'm in this predicament, I usually end up saying, fuck it, and running it on Monday. But I guess we'll just find out about that. But for right now, I'm just finishing out my 10-hour break. And then... Um, then we'll start heading towards, uh, heading north towards Detroit. So I just uh, left the dock out of Coca-Cola. I was there for like three and a half hours. And uh, I picked up, uh, I got 42, just over 42,000 pounds of uh, delicious bubbly soda pop. And uh, this is going down, like I said, to Twinsburg. And I have made the executive decision. This load's going down on Monday. I'm going to the truck stop right now. I'm taking my ass home for the day. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, today's vlog. Uh, like I said earlier, it was uh, a merge of two days into one, just because yesterday was pretty damn short. Uh, because of uh, being in the, the Coca-Cola's dock for six hours yesterday, and then it's just a 200-mile run down to Columbia, Columbus. So, anyways, yeah, no, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Only if you want to, though. It helps me out tremendously, and it'll let you know every time I make a new video. So, thank you guys for watching, and as always, run hard and get paid.